Hey everybody, Costa we are once again and uh, today we are going to catch up on our last video which was installing Cocos Creator and let me fire up Cocos Creator once again there we go okay and let's uh, create a new project real quick I'm going to name this demo okay and create it It's gonna take a while to create a new project and fire it up. There you go. Alright. Okay, the first thing that you're gonna notice here is that whenever you create a new project, you're gonna be uh, presented with the default layout, Cocos Creator. Let me walk you through with the uh, interface out here right out here we have the node tree right if you are coming from an unity uh, game development uh, environment uh, what node is is basically a game object right uh, every single node uh, is uh, con uh, considered as one of the interacting elements of a video game uh, that's basically out here on the uh, cocos so for the very first uh, default scene, we have a canvas, right? There you go. And basically, what a canvas does is it holds the main uh, presentation and the layout of the game that's uh, that's gonna be rendered out, right? And uh, right out here in the most uh, in the rightmost corner of the screen, we have this properties panel right here. And uh, we know we notice something that uh, the position here is locked. There you go, the 480 by 320, right? And the design resolution can be set from here. So whenever you want to make any changes and um, uh, changes to the dimensions of the uh, game that you're going to be working on, you're going to be changing the design resolutions from here. So let's say we want a resolution of uh, 1280 by 720, right? Let's do that. 1280 720. Oops. 720. Yeah, that's more like it. So what you're going to notice now is that not only has the size uh, been changed from the design resolution that we provided right now, but also the center has been automatically calculated, right? And we all have some other properties like rotation, scale, anchor, and whatnot, color, and we're gonna go over these uh, options a little bit later on. But first, uh, let's do something. Uh, we have this assets for, uh, panel out here. Uh, for now, we're not going to be bothered with the default Hello World scene that's already presented to us. Let's delete that. Yep. And create a new scene. We do that by uh, clicking on Scene, Create Scene, right? Okay. And drag it inside the Scene folder. Okay. Let's name this scene to. I don't know gameplay okay now one thing is that uh, every scene file that's saved from Cocos Creator is uh, of the extension dot fire as you can see here okay and we already have some scripts out here we're not going to be bothered with that let's delete that as well and the texture so, uh, now let's keep this single color for now I'm going to tell you why in a little bit Okay, so uh, let's fire up this gameplay scene. Okay, that was not fine. Okay. What you're gonna observe that this is a blank scene as well, and we are currently working inside this gameplay. Right? So the very first thing that we're gonna do is check out the navigation, right? As you can see right here, uh, drag with right mouse button to pan viewport scroll to zoom so let's do that right I'm scrolling it's zooming in right 
and I'm scrolling out and it zooms out pretty straightforward right one thing though is uh, you know you can uh, press down the right mouse button and without releasing it if you drag you can pan the viewport right same thing goes for the uh, middle mouse button as well easy peasy right now uh, we also have a few panels down here at the bottom the console and the timeline we're gonna talk about the timeline in details in a much later video where we are going to be covering animations in depth right? for now uh, let's uh, just note that there are two uh, panels provided by default uh, when you fire up a Cocos project also we have a node library out here we have a, a sprite, sprite, a text a label, bridge text, particle systems, tile maps these are the um, basic game uh, components going on and for UIs we have canvas, button, layout, scroll view, page view, progress bar, edit box, slider, toggle, toggle group, video player and web view. Fine. And we also can uh, we can also have uh, custom nodes. These are basically nodes that uh, we can have as prefabs or script components, right? Uh, all right, let's uh, get into uh, the options out here. Uh, for uh, for me to demonstrate this, I'm gonna drag drop a sprite from this node library right into my scene like so and as you can see a uh, default sprite frame or rather the image has been already provided inside the sprite component there this by the way is a component see this is a sprite node and this is a sprite component okay now from what we can see here is that a sprite by default has a node component to it because every game object that you drag drop onto the scene is a node or an extension of the node right you can add game components uh, onto a default node and you can even have uh, custom components like scripts uh, uh, onto the nodes basically so we're gonna do nothing fancy out here, just check out some of the properties going on. Uh, basically here, okay. So uh, let's see. Since I have this uh, move gizmo selected right here, I can move it in the vertical direction, in the horizontal direction. And if I select on this uh, square thingy out here in the middle, I can drag this in both of the axes at the same time, right? Like I can freely move this thing. Then comes the rotation gizmo, right? If I select this, we have this very cool rotation thingy going on. And if I drag, I hold on to this and drag, I can rotate this thing, right? There we go. There we go. See what I'm saying? It takes a little getting used to this thing, but you get the idea. You can even uh, rotate this thing from the inspector out here. Say if I want a rotation of 45 degrees, it's going to rotate 45 degrees, right? And the rotations are uh, clockwise, if you notice this. See, 45 degrees this way, if I put in 90, it's going to be right there. 180, 360, okay, and 0 and 360 degrees are the same. There you go. And we also have this scale gizmo, right? If I uh, hold on to this gizmo, with this handle out here, I can scale it along the y axis. There we go. You can scale. Beyond one, I can scale inside one. I can even scale in the x axis. There we go. 
Now, if I hold on to this thing in there and scale, I can have a uniform scale going on. See what I'm saying? Pretty cool, huh? Okay. Or I can set the scale from here. One, one, which will go back to the default scale. I can have this rectangular transform gizmo. There you go. See what I'm saying? The one more thing that you can notice here is that we can have a rectangular transform from this point, from this point, from this point, and here. And you can even click in the middle and drag to move the entire thing. Also, if we hold on to these things on the sides, we can scale them on either sides, like so. There we go. It's uh, so basically it's not going to change the scale as you can see here, but it's going to change the size of it right and in case you have been wondering oh what am I gonna do if I screw up the default scale well there's a simple thing that you can do which is come down to this area this pride area select the drop down from the size mode let's say to rock boom there you go you step forward right okay now uh, there's this thing called anchor position, right? Notice that by default the anchor is set inside the center of the rectangle or the bounding box basically. What you can do is hold on, grab on to this little blue circle in here and shift it, right? So what I, whenever I'm transforming it, uh, my transformations will be about this point. Let's see. There we go. See what I'm saying? Okay. And you can also set the anchor from this uh, sprite node inspector out here. Let's set the anchor to default 0.5 and 0.5 on either axis. See, now the rotation has been applied above the axis. There we go. Okay. Finally, we have these two uh, options out here to draw the gizmos at the actual point, anchor point of the node, or at the center of the object's bounds. Let me show you this real quick. Say I have the anchor at zero and zero which is at this point, right? This corner. There you go. Can you see that? Okay, let me make it a little bit more obvious by changing the anchor to 0 0.1, 0 0.1, 0 0.1. Okay. Now, if I uh, draw that this more, by default, what this button does here is draw that this more at the actual anchor point right there you go the transform gizmo or the translate gizmo and the rotation gizmo see it's positioned at the anchor point now if I switch over to this one it's gonna draw at the re uh, rectangle bounds at the center of the rectangle bounds okay there you go see what I'm saying and in this case Whenever I am uh, applying any transformations, the uh, transformations are applied at the center, geometric center of the object or the node, so to speak, and the positions and the rotations are recalculated. Notice the inspector, right? 
okay so that takes care of these two options out here next we have uh, gizmos rotation is relative to nodes which is what I'm doing and uh, and gizmos rotation stay at the workspace orientation okay let's check this one out Okay, so that basically covers up a very uh, brief introduction to what we can do with uh, the inspector on a default sprite object, right? On a sprite node. So let's wrap up this video in this part. And we're gonna pick up on the next tutorials with uh, some more of the available built in nodes, right? Alright then, peace guys, have a nice day, good night, and stay tuned for the next tutorial. Bye.